But I, I'll give you the, the parallel example. How many of you now pump gasoline for your own car? Go back sometime, virtually all of you raise your hand. Go back sometime and read the arguments in the late 1970s about why we could not allow self-service gasoline. People wouldn't be able to do it. They'd spill gas, it would be a fire hazard. I mean, go back and read them sometime. Trusting in people, sharing information, broadening out the base of everybody having a chance to play is very, very important. Now, really radical idea, probably get in trouble again, but I can't help. <laughs> Self-law. If you and your spouse decide to get divorced, why do you need a lawyer if you both agree? The state is, but why is the lawyer? It's the lawyer. Because, because you need a lawyer to, to discern what the legalese says. Right, but that's because of the way they write the legalese. And because most, most people don't have access to that kind of information right. or know how to find right. it. Right. But what, well, what if we organized a system that said, here is your self-enhanced guide to getting a divorce? So what is their possible incentive? to let go of that kind of control. I didn't say the lawyers liked them. The consumer. I mean, you, you, think, you, think, you think the gas station owners in the late 70s liked giving up full service gasoline? No. Right, they lost. Right. Well, that's what life's about. They sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. They have to do it I mean, you imagine yeah. blacksmiths the first time a car came through. I mean, blacksmiths took it on the head. I mean, uh, buggy whip manufacturers hated it. Do you know how seldom you ever see anybody using a buggy whip on a car? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just think about it. But my point is, if we're talking about self-learning, if we're talking about self-health, how many things that are currently part of our legal system could in fact be done if you built expert systems and you made it available and, and knowing adults read it and said, I, I am willing to sign a bond that I accept this. I don't want to worry about a lawyer. I'll just bond that this is okay. And how many things could you do them? Simple wills? Do that on you. I've done a lot of that myself anyway. I've, I've acted as my own attorney several times, and right. it's not that hard. Yeah, but it's speaking in divorce actions, there have been time and time again, and you can you can research this where couples will go in and they tell the judge, we've already got it worked out, just sign right. it. We're ready. Nope, you can't have it this way because the law says that you need to do this. You no, no, no. But you're talking about the world as it is today. I'm talking about the world as it can be in the information age. So, how do you step from where we're at now to where we're You do it over time. You do it politically, you do it culturally, you teach courses, stay controversial. <laughs> you know, you go, but literally, this, this, is how you, this is how you go through an age of change. You, you, you just, first of all, you talk about it. Remember, supply leads to demand. And people suddenly go, oh, yeah, why can't I do that? And you're going to say to people, why, sh why shouldn't you be allowed to have conflict resolution without a lawyer? People start to go, oh, yeah. Particularly since a lot of lawyers actually make their living by increasing the conflict level. With a helicopter, though, we're we're taking a television camera out, and our field medics can can actually televise a patient condition, and a doctor right. doesn't have to come. So you have a real-time, immediate capability in the field. I mean, you're you're a living example because of what you do with 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 rescue medicine. You're a living example of what I'm talking about. That we're we're seeing breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Now, let me carry a stage further. Public safety in the information age. When you have a particularly dangerous store, you put a camera. You have a particularly dangerous street, you put a camera on. You, you release a felon on parole, you put an ankle bracelet on them that is exactly the same we use to track elk and bear and other things in, in uh, biological surveys. You track them by a computer, and if it turns out they happen to be at the 7-Eleven exactly at the time there's the there's a, uh, uh, that, that there's a robbery, you have a theory. <laughs> Towards Orwell's 1980. You are if you're a felon. Well. <laughs> yeah. But you, I mean, you are in that sense in Orwell's. You're always potentially in Orwell's 1984 because you always have the potential power of the state to do that if you let them. The question is, I mean, the other option you can say the felon is you don't want an ankle bracelet? Fine, stay in jail. But if we're putting you out on parole, and we know that 65% of the people we put out on parole who were convicted of this particular kind of crime are likely to do it again. Why can't we protect ourselves? And, and the other option is just not let them out, which I'm equally willing to do. Which, by the way, if you think about distance work, is one reason prisons ought to be made to pay for themselves. I mean, prisoners ought to work 48 hours a week and study 12 hours a week. And you'd have a different world. You'd also have a different prison, because they'd be busy 60 hours a week. 
this different system. Okay. <laughs> let me let me talk about another one where where and this is one if I can if I can slightly cross the 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 the, uh, uh, the bridge to to my other job. This is one where we first started talking about three years ago, and I am really excited about this particular. We have the potential in this information age with the spirit of invention and discovery of fully enhancing the potential of every challenged American. Now, this one to me is really exciting. And, and we just agreed uh, at a meeting yesterday to set up a task force to do this. I believe if you talk about the severely challenged, people who have genetic problems, who've been in a wreck, people who are in wheelchairs, people who have maybe born with Down syndrome or born with a variety of problems, I believe we're on the edge of a revolution. And part of what we're going to do, and this, all, this is part of why I teach the course, and, why, and, and this is one where I can actually tell you, we've now gone from idea to conceptualizing it in more detail to beginning to move it into the legislative process. What we want to do is take this body of people and talk to the best rehabilitation people in the country and the best technical people in the country and say, if we bring to bear all the computer revolution, all the information revolution, all the DNA revolution, how can we improve their lives? And my theory is this, that when you talk about welfare, that there are, there are very different populations engaged. And that for most Americans, and this goes back to Deming's notion that you have to start with the theory. 